All right. Good morning again. Good morning. And welcome back. And I'm hoping everybody had a wonderful weekend. Um, I'm, I hope that you did. Um, it's always good to see us again. And um, did anybody do anything that was over the top special? Not me. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Well, I'm saying whoa, 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 because I did not, although I did watch some new movies, but um, in my process of doing my movie watching, I'm, at you laughing at me, I'm finding that I'm becoming a, a, a critic of movies that I've seen from years ago. But um, just real quickly, one of the things is I'm a Perry Mason fan. Oh, I love it. And watching the same ones over and over again, what I realize is if I were in trouble, I would not want a uh, burger to be my um, attorney because he always loses to Perry. Mm -hmm. I would not want Lieutenant Trag to be my investigator because he always arrests you whether <laughs> he's read you your Miranda rights or not. He throws you in jail. And then lastly, one of the big things that came out of me watching this is watching the dress. I mean, when Della's dress, and I remember the days of having, when we went to church, we always had our gloves. Mm. And, no, not purse, that pocketbook on our arm, yeah, yeah. hat on our heads, pantyhose on. So then it made me <laughs> go back and look at Oh my goodness, can you imagine trying to do this and you wake up late and you got 10 minutes to get to where you go? So, but anyhow, um, so it does bring some laughter to me looking at some of the things. And um, I've even gotten into Andy Griffith's show again because there's really not a lot on, but the unique thing I found about those shows as well is that they really were good, clean shows. They had laughter in them without using a lot of uh, what we call bad words, for a lot of words. And you could just sit there and laugh and you didn't really have to be concerned about whether or not your kids were sitting there watching with you, having to say to them, we'll go in another room or we'll do this and do that. So it's been enjoyable. So that's my new thing now. So what you think? They make me feel younger. I go back in time when I was a child, when I watched them, stuff like that. I just, it seemed like I just go in time. Mentally, I go back in time. Well, yeah, it's like I said, it's really, really good. So mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. All right. So here is our word for the week. Pat, can you hear me? Because your speaker's off. I can hear you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Your speaker was off there, so I couldn't hear you. But my word for this week is celebrate. Celebrate. And according to the description that I read in Webster and searching on the internet, they define celebrate as an acknowledgement of a significant or happy event. So based upon that, my feeling is every day we should be celebrating. I mean, for, for being here, being surrounded and supported by friends, family, no matter who you are, we should all be celebrating <clears throat> because every day to me is a special occasion. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that they define it, we usually think about it, we're celebrating a birthday, an anniversary, or something unique like that. But as I said, life itself is a celebration. However, when you add to it, birthdays and other events, it does become a special event for you. So today we're going to celebrate Nancy, whose birthday is today. Oh, Did I get it right, Nancy? Yes. It is 9920. Nine, today is Nancy's birthday. So this Thank falls you. into you. a special occasion of celebration. So I'd like for all of us to give Nancy a hand. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Thank happy you. birthday. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. And by chance, Nancy, I found out uh, because my 
information on my phone came up and gave me a reminder that another friend of mine, Lynn, her birthday is today also. So mm -hmm. there are two nine nines, but I wanted to say, recognize your celebration for today. And say yes. happy birthday to you. Okay, we're all good? Okay. So that's our celebration. Okay. Um, at this point, do you have any questions or anything um, that you need to ask me before I get into show and tell? I like to do that early because I do have a few things I wanted to discuss in regards to our jewelry craft. This is your chance. I had a question. I can't think what it is now. I should have wrote it down. Now I can't help with memory stuff there, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if it comes to you um, after the fact, just raise a hand and I'll be okay. happy to address it for you. How's that? Is that okay? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Okay. So let me go into our show and tell. We had some unique things that came about and then I will um, get into the subject matter that I... Uh, Okay, let's see. So as usual, most of you are familiar with the fact that I normally um, line everything up the way that is submitted to me. And usually Mary is always the first one in that line because I can, Mary will send things to me sometimes two or three days early uh, before class starts. So it's, I'm always waiting to find out what she's going to send through this week. Um, if you have not submitted anything, what I always ask is that you take a picture of your item because it allows me to show it up close. So when I get it from you, I normally have to take that photo. I've got to download it from my phone and I load it onto a drive that I share and then I download it. So I do a download, upload, and all to get it to where it needs to be. But it does allow you to see the details of the things that's been submitted. So if you have something you want to send, that's the process I'm asking you to do. Just take a picture of it and send it to my um, email address or however you want to, and I'll take it there, OK? So what Mary submitted to, um, this time is, when I look at Mary's things, what always amazed me is, my God, when do you get time to work on all this? <laughs> you well, want to talk about your things? Uh, well, <laughs> as, as, as a, oh, the first thing about earrings, as a child, I was the only girl. And the one thing that would set me apart, uh, and I wanted to be said, I wanted holes in my ears. So earrings are really important to me. I, I don't go without earrings. Now I have three holes. They must, I must have three earrings in. That's just a must. Uh, so I love earrings. I just started wearing dangling earrings. They always was little studs, but I, I love these danglers. Now, I, the, the, as a child, I love charm bracelets. Those, those okay. were the only bracelets I really um, um, knew about. So I, you know, I'm learning to work with the change. It triples and, and flips and everything, but I'm getting better at it, and I'm kind of right. happy with it turning out. Uh, pendants, uh, now in jewelry class, uh, we started out with we stringing, so we made necklaces, but mm -hmm. pendants was always a thing I, I wore as a child, a pendant, right. was, you know, so I tend to make a lot of pendants, uh, okay. um, I, I just, I, and, and the timing, um, I enjoy doing it, I, it's, 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 it's very important, it, it really is, it's very important, it, it makes me maintain my sanity, and when I think of something, I do it. Um, okay. It, it's, 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 it's kind of, yeah, like it's detrimental to my sanity. I would say well, that. And, and that's fine. You don't have to really, um, I don't want you to apologize for it or anything like that. I mean, if it helps you maintain your balance, that's, yes. that's what we're about, however you choose it to do it. it. I, I have I have a challenge, but well, most time because I do work about two or three projects a week, so that I have these things for class. So I know it takes um, that focus time, but it, it is very relaxing when you get into it. So the chain that's on these pieces, um, this is not chain mail. You did you purchase the chain? I purchased chain. Of, uh, okay. Of okay. All right. Looks good. Any questions? Comments? 
and all way I could display them, but you can really see. I had uh, the, the bus, the, the little hand, but you, you can't see it really on the, uh, but and I had the one that you put several on and you wouldn't okay. see much. So that's why I, I, I laid them out. Instead. Oh, no, no, that's fine. It's not a problem. I'm surprised you would get this piece to stand up because I have one of these and it doesn't have a lot of weight. I mean, it mine no. kind of gets kind of wonky sometimes when I add something to it. I usually put an adhesive pad on the bottom to stabilize it so that it doesn't tilt over or something. It looks good. You did a great job. Um, I would like to find out where you purchase your beads and all of your um, accessories. My, my, my beads I get from Walmart. They're the little 99 cent beads. I love them more so than I do the other beads. Uh, on occasion, I buy the ones on the string when I go there. But uh, I, I go into the, the nine, I found that 99 cent bucket has just just absolutely fabulous. Really? So you're saying these beads came from all the 99 cent beads? Oh, wow. You get a, maybe about five, sometimes six, in fact, depending on the size of them. Okay. And I just found a habit. I make it, a, it's a habit now because I, I love them. I love them. I just love them. So one last question, Mary, because I know you said that you you had the three holes. So when you're wearing the dangles, are you mm -hmm. wearing studs in the other two? Because yes, this, that's this okay. You were doing I the studs. I know what my question was about the the one. I and I'll ask later. We get the answer. I figured the question out now. What I was going to ask. Okay, answer. okay. Because I only asked that because of balance. That's why I was curious. Yeah, how you balance, I have two studs, and uh, the dangler is in the bottom. Okay, got you. I got you. Okay. Oh. All right. Um, let's see what else we had. I was trying to remember. I think you were the only one from the beginners class that um, sent me something to display. No, I take that back. Um, let me just stop this for a moment, see if Annie's here, because I have something for her. Annie, can you hear me? She joined us while we were doing the share. Okay. Annie? Trying to get her set up. I'm sorry, ladies. Annie? I, I do remind everybody to double check your sound and your audio before you come on. And you know how to do that, right? Okay. Thank you. Annie? Okay, let me go back to my share screen. The reason I'm asking because she, the next item I'm about to show is something that she said to me. Annie? I'm not sure she can hear me, but let me go back. Ugh. I can hear. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I was about to show your your piece, and it's so ironic that you came in at the same time. Okay. Um, I have issues logging into your site. I don't know why, but I do. You see, you had a problem. I've all, I always have problems logging in, and I don't know why. Okay, I'll try to talk to you about that. I, I can say that I may have been slow uh, uh, admitting you today because I was in the share mode and I happened to look up, I saw the notice that you were there. But um, I wanted to, this is yours, isn't it, Annie? No. No, I, I did that. Pat. Yes. I apologize. That's, that's okay. Okay. Um, I really wanted to commend you on your piece. And the reason hard. for that is being a new person in jury making mm -hmm. and using the uh, the video. Did the video help you? Well, um, you know, I don't have one for the necklace. I just use the same one as the uh, bracelet. Right. Yeah. Which is I, it's on there for the necklace also because it's oh, just okay. up. Right. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. But um, uh, I, I think you did a great job. I really, <laughs> really do. And um, even with the closure and everything, you know, I kind of focus in on that. So it was hard for me. <laughs> but you did it. Yeah. yeah but I, I don't mean, know. I think I could have done better. Well, we are our own worst critics in everything we do. 
And what I remind you of is that you're not doing this from in a classroom setting. And that is another reason why I applaud you being able to do this and using videos and other things to follow that in order to get your item together. So I don't want you to feel that you didn't do a good job because I think you did a fantastic job. Okay. I finished it. Well, I'm always, um, it, it's interesting to me how many people since we've been doing the virtual classes, somehow it's as if they focus more on what they're doing and following the instructions and doing a, a great job. And I'm wondering if because when we're in a group setting, not everybody's talking all at the same time and people aren't really focusing. But I, I mean, I absolutely applaud you for doing this. Thank you. I, just Thank did, you. I think you did a great job. Okay. Yeah, you did a good job, yeah. Pat. Yeah, Thank right. you very much. <laughs> yeah, for being a newbie and everything. Yes, yes. So do we have any other questions or comments before I get into the second part of what I want to talk about? We're all good? Okay. Um, what I wanted to focus on today is pendants, P-E-N-D-A-N-T. Pendant or pendants is another uh, add-on that we have in um, jewelry making, and it's a big deal. Um, a pendant, which is a dangle or a drop piece, um, the description of pendant or synonym for pendant is hanging. It really refers to some type of ornamental piece that's added to your jewelry making or jewelry that enhances it. So sometimes I call it an enhancer because you can have this row of beads and then add an enhancer to it and it totally changes the concept again. So in the process of thinking about pendants, the pieces that I showed you that Mary had, she had several different pieces in there that are, are pendants that she makes to add. And what's nice about a pendant is you don't really need to have an elaborate strand of beads or something. You can just have, it can be a cord, it can be a chain, it can be anything. And what I like to do is, um, and I'll just pull this up for a moment, with pendants is oftentimes when I have leftover beads or a bead or whatever, I always turn them into a pendant so that I can wear it with the chain. Uh, because I wear a lot of things sometimes that has the, like a V-neck or kind of an open collar or something of that nature. So in doing so, I will take just an old, you know, a, like this bead here. This was a bead I had left from a strand or something like that. And I just added bead caps to the end and made a loop. And I wear it a lot of times with the chain. This was a, a bead I had left from a dangle of beads. It was the only one. So I made a pendant out of it. These are um, pieces I did out of crystals um, that are done together and it's locked together with fishing wire, believe it or not, with the amount of filament wire, so it's flexible. But I do this a lot in making pendant beads to add that extra on for something or use that bead so I don't have all these single beads just sitting there with nothing to do. So this is one way in which I use a pendant. Um, what I also have is still these single beads sometimes, but I only have that one. So this was a leftover bead that I, matter, I bought it from the Down the Street Bead Show. You know how they have strands and they just throw them all in a big basket or something and you can pick it out. Um, this piece is a bead I paid a dollar for. Um, this was... Um, a piece of glass that I fuse in my kiln, but I just wire wrapped it and made a bale out of it. Like this piece, it has, it, because it had a hole from end to end, I just ran a regular piece of wire through it and wrapped it around to create this loop for a bale. This piece um, I bought at the Gem and Mineral Show. This I paid a little more for, but it did not have holes or anything in it. 
So in order to create a bail for it so that I could have something to run my chain through is where I created the bail that's on here by wrapping this around. Um, I have a really good uh, gold filled ch chain. Uh, so I think it's a gold chain. But I use that. So I'll just take it off of one thing and I'll slip it on to something else. But it just adds um, flavor to something, but it's also another way in which you can use your leftover beads. And it doesn't have to be a single piece. It can be an add-on of something else. That's what I started doing, using my leftover bead. That's why I can pin it just for that reason. Mm -hmm. But not only that is, um, I don't know if you're familiar with those, um, what they call it, this looks like a safety pin, like a Scottish pin, mm -hmm. where it has the loops at the bottom. Also, depending upon how you add your loop to your piece, you can get And with those pins, you can slide it through your bail, and it becomes like a pin that you can, you know, rather than wear it as a neck piece, you can wear it as attachment pin on your clothes. Yeah. Really. And if you were interested in doing the, the, the regular safety pins, they have these beautiful brass pins that you purchase in the sewing department. And it is a safety pin, but it's a very decorative pin that you can slide your pendant loop through that and add other beads to it if you want to. Mm -hmm. And it's another way of making a decorative piece. Very nice. Uh, my grandchildren gave me, um, I went to a, a Veterans Day uh, program at that school, and they okay. took uh, safety pins, and that some kind of way they put the beads on the little safety pin and put it on there, and it made a flag, and they gave it to me. That was real neat. One of the, um, and this goes back a while ago, we would do a lot of challenges in class. And one of the things that we did was making jewelry pieces from safety pins. And I'll pull them out because I have safety pin earrings. Um, Jackie made this absolutely gorgeous necklace from safety pins. And we would do different challenges, you know, to trigger what's created for someone. But those came out to be really, really nifty projects and stuff that. Now, um, along the lines of, of pendants and what you can do with them, and this is something that we're doing in the afternoon class. I think I gave this in Friday class also. Um, I'll just show this real quick because your pendants doesn't always have to be um, a bead of that type. This is um, this mm -hmm. pendant piece here I made over the weekend. This is one of the uh, in class. This is the chain that I use all the time. I just slip it out of one and slip it on to something else. But this is a beaded pendant piece. Um, um, I'm always trying to find things that we can use leftover beads if we have them around. But um, this is the piece that I did um, for that. Um, and so I'll just show you yours real quick. Um, since you were here. I don't like to. This is the same pattern that um, this is what Nancy did with that pattern, what she came up with. We're using two whole beads, but what's nice about, um, like I said, pendants are really, really great, and when you bead them, it's so easy to take them and attach them, like this particular piece here, because this is the piece you can take these, make these discs and connect them together and have a fantastic necklace, a bracelet, or anything that you want to. There are so many options when you get into the flexible part of doing um, beadwork that you can add to it. What I think is um, interesting is if you notice like Nancy has uh, uh, her bail, this is her bail here. Mm -hmm. If you watch this, so she's using um, a metal type bale. When I did my same pattern, what I did is I did it so I added a jump ring because 
I knew how thick my chain is and I didn't want, then this is something you have to be uh, conscious of also. When you are adding a bail to your piece, you really want to keep your bail in sync with the piece or the whole of your um, pendant. Because if you've got a large bail or a large um, jump ring and you have a single cord or something running through that, that does not accommodate the piece, it, it doesn't look in sync. So there's something you should always think about. And the reason I did such a small jump ring because I knew I would be adding this chain to it. And I did not want my jump ring to be so large or that loop to be so large. It makes my chain look out of sync. And I also do, um, if I add a jump ring, I add it of a size because this end of this chain is the piece that I always use to slip through. I don't use this side because it will require a greater loop side. So I know that I can always slide through my loop using this end of the chain. So you want to think about symmetry when you're doing something like that. Even when um, a lot of people um, don't necessarily think about the size of something, they'll have super large beads in one area, then they have these tiny little beads in a, you know, next to it. So you really need to kind of balance out your pieces when you're looking at it, just, just food for thought when you're doing something. So I've had a sort of situations where I may have a larger um, loop or something. So what I'll do is I might, if I'm using leather or something, I might have two or three leather cords running through it to fill it up to balance the piece out. But then you have the opposite problem because if you have a very small piece like this, you don't want to have, say, a giant chain, a really thick chain or something like that because now you have this dainty piece and you may have something that's throwing it out of balance. Does that, um, is it logical what I'm, sh I'm sharing with you, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let me just stop this for a moment. Okay. But um, those are some of the things that you need to um, think about in the, even when you're doing just regular beads, if you're not, you know, working at a pendant or something like that. When you get into uh, beads, particularly wooden beads have what we call these big eyes or large um, holes to them. Oh, okay. Um, you need to be concerned about what's sitting next to the large hole of that bead. Because if you have this big gap and then you're trying to, um, let's just say you're trying to, you're not going to be able to gain pull in enough um, strength against it because your crimp is going to slip through that hole. Mm. So one of the rules that we like to look at is always, if we have a large hole bead, is adding smaller beads or something that's going to fill that hole okay. so that when you add the next piece, it's not going to slip inside okay. of your the large hole. So there's nothing wrong, but that's kind of a, a rule you need to think about. And it even gets to that point. Um, I've seen people have problems when they're crimping, just doing a regular string of beads, mm -hmm. simply because they're, the end bead is, has a large hole to it. So you need to plan that when you lay out your design, is that I am going to make certain that I end with a bead hole of a size that when I crimp it down, it's not going to slip inside of the bead. Because if you can't get enough, um, pull it tight enough, you're going to always have that slack in your piece. Yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're saying. Okay, so I'm assuming, did you encounter that problem at one point? Okay. Yeah. Um, another reason I love to use um, bead caps um, in some instances or, you know, like filigree, something that will cover that hole that has a smaller hole so the crimp bead does not slip inside of it because 
it creates a lot of, you can spend an extra 30 minutes trying to crimp something down because of that hole size. Mm -hmm. It does make a difference. So you have any questions, uh, tell me where you are. I don't have any questions. You, you okay? I'm okay. Yes. Okay, so have you, and I don't remember, and you have not started working with um, your earrings yet, and Barry. No, because I have to. I have to uh, purchase some more things. And oh, okay. Okay. Um, okay. Because I don't have all of the things from the video, so I have to okay. purchase some more items. All right. Well, just communicate with me. Maybe there's something else we can come up with if you run into a problem. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Annie, did you get my response to your message to your? Um, Piece that you, re uh -huh. you received it. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah, mm -hmm. the reason I asked, I'm kind of repeating myself. Yesterday, we had a power outage, which meant my system went down. Of course, you know, when the internet goes, everything goes. And I can't even understand what really happened, but um, I had glitches. So I was just double checking. I wasn't certain if some of my responses went through or not. So I'm glad that that um, worked out. Um. Mary, do, uh, where are you? Do you have any questions? Are you all good at this time? Um, when I'm, this is what I was saying, because I'm making my attendance. You know, you uh, generally most of them are the wire is intersecting. So once you've been the wire, you have an unbalanced sorter. Right, right. But anyway, I can, I, I, I'm trying to figure out, do I need to buy a tool to hold it or something so I can get the balance? Let me think on that for you. I have to think on that for a minute. I'll text you with it or email you. We have uh, less than a minute left. So I'm just reminding you guys, if you have any questions or anything, reach out, use the um, email address, uh, send me a text, and I will definitely get back to you. Um, hopefully today we won't have any problems. I'm watching my internet thing here, you know, getting me timer. Um, I, I'm really, I'm so frustrated with at and sometimes, but I just want to thank you again. Um, I really appreciate your following me and participating in the class. And like I said, I'm here and hopefully I'll see some of you this afternoon or all of you this afternoon or whatever, but thank you so much. And I will thank see you, you again. Okay. I have a quick, I have a quick question. I don't know I if you're going to make it. Go ahead. Okay, I can't log in. I can't get into your channel. Is there a reason why? Um... Let me call you back and talk to you about it. I, I, I'm not sure, but I'll call you back in a minute because systems go cut us off. All right, thank you. You're welcome, Annie. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.